Hi. Today we have with us Sarah Lurch from the um, Atacocan Native Friendship Center, and um, she is from Atacocan. So, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit maybe where Atacocan is for those of us who don't know? Sure, sounds good. So, Atacocan is actually two and a half hours north of Thunder Bay. Okay, that's that's way out there. Very way up there and very, very isolated. So the nearest uh, small community we have to us is Fort Francis, which is an hour and a half away. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do. So I'm the executive director at the Atacoke Native Friendship Center. And the Atacoke Native, Native Friendship Center exists to improve the lives of the urban Indigenous population. So we do that through a variety of measures and we provide services from, you know, birth to death, uh, covering the entire life cycle. So essentially, if it's a human problem impacting the urban Indigenous population, it's a problem that we need to look at and try to help support or solve. Can you tell me what was maybe one unexpected role that you've found yourself in in this journey? Uh, my role as the executive director at the Atacoke Native Friendship Center uh, is a good example of that. I never expected to uh, get this position. I actually only applied for the position because one of my Indigenous friends was pushing me and I kind of did it to make her leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And I completely expected that I would never get this position. Um, but here I am, you know, five years later. That's crazy. And you're not Indigenous. I'm not Indigenous. Uh -huh. uh, they knew very upfront. I'm from Ireland. Uh, I moved here as a child. So, you know, definitely not Native to even yeah. Canada. Wow. So that would be shocking even to be offered a job like that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool. That's a God thing. For sure. It has to be. Yeah. Um, so what are some things up there that ha has really broken your heart for the Indigenous community? Uh, there's a lot. It's been very shocking to me moving up here, kind of the perceptions of how I thought things were and the, the reality of what is. Um, some of the major issues we deal with is, you know, just being really rural. So, and poverty, combining those two things. So how do our clients get to Thunder Bay for their medicals at the largest medical center if they don't have access to transportation and we don't have buses running? Um, so just basic poverty impacts, of course, food security, food costs a lot more in Atacokan. Um, just because we're more rural. So when you're dealing with people living in poverty, it's just a much more complex issue. Um, and we're also dealing with our, our clients and our vulnerable in the community being targeted by human traffickers and by people selling drugs. Um, basically, they're in the business to try to find the broken humans or create broken humans so that they can make money. Wow, that is heartbreaking. Um, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of human trafficking going on there. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, some of it I can't talk about right now. We're dealing mm -hmm. with investigations locally, um, but it will be hitting the media in you know not too distant future. And it's absolutely unbelievable what we're watching. Wow, that's sad. Very sad. Um, how can people uh, come alongside you? in the work that you're doing up there? What is What are some things we can get involved? Um, prayer, absolutely. Um, not just for me, for our team, for our community members, for our youth leaders, um, and just the magnitude of crisis that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a lot, it wears on you. Um, we are working on initiatives for food security. So green year-round greenhouse projects. Um, we're working on trying to very quickly get emergency housing off the ground mm -hmm. for youth who've aged out of care. They're the ones who are the most seriously targeted by human traffickers. So when they hit 16 and through till their early 20s, um, there's not safe places for them to go right now. So that really is one of our largest um, priorities in light of what we're dealing with with the trafficking um, that's going on here. So, you know, we need prayer for that. We can use financial support for that. We can also use help of people who have, you know, skilled trades, things like that, who'd be willing to help. Uh, we're going to have a long road on some of the projects that we have underway. For sure. For sure. Sounds challenging, but kind of exciting too. 
it is exciting. What we've decided is we'd rather have landlord problems than the types of problems we're dealing with now. So our goal is to trade the types of problems so that we're not dealing with, you know, not having safe places. We'd rather worry about the things landlords worry about and make sure they're safe places. Right. Right. That's excellent. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, is it okay if I pray with you before we go? Absolutely. Great. Okay. Thank you. Dear Lord, thank you for this time with Sarah. God, so many of your people are hurting in Atacokan and are in need of the love of Christ. Help Sarah to show them that love. Give her strength and wisdom in all situations. Help her to stand boldly rooted in Christ and to not fear when the enemy tries to stop her. Father, thank you for all Sarah does to help her community and the indigenous people of Atacokan. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah.